you know, if you study people who are at the pinnacle of anything, you recognize that to get there, motivation was maybe 1% of the formula. Maybe. 1%. And I'll prove it to you. If you want to become a world-class bodybuilder, say an IFBB pro, what that takes is you have to train twice a day, six days a week. You have to have eight meals a day. Your calorie intake is regimented. Your meals are pre-planned and pre-cooked. You don't eat according to taste. You eat according to function. So my trainer, for instance, will eat and I'm going, what are you eating? And he's having the most, he'll have chicken that was boiled without salt. And he'll have like half a kilo of it. I mean, what are you doing? He says, I'm taking in protein. He doesn't say I'm eating. He says, I'm taking in protein. For him, it's functional. It's not taste-based. Then, you will probably have to train for a minimum. And this is if you are a genetic phenom. You'd have to train for a minimum of 10 years before you could get on a stage and compete at an average level with an average global bodybuilder. Average. Okay. So why am I, sa- why am I telling you this? All, all of us here, at the beginning of a new year, write these things called New Year's resolutions. And then it, you, you know, you, New Year's resolutions, number one, make more money. Yeah? Uh, number two, uh, change my boyfriend. Number three, get into shape. Yeah? Number three, get into shape is somewhere in the top three. So what do you do? You go to the gym, you get a gym membership. Yeah? You buy, you go to the local uh, Nike store and you buy like all of your gym gear. You are motivated. You are inspired. You are going to the damn gym. You go to YouTube, you subscribe to all of the fitness channels. You go to Instagram, you follow all of the fitness models. You are motivated. You are going to the damn gym. You're going to get in shape. That's what you're going to do. The people you're following on YouTube have been working out for a minimum of five years to look like that. So you have the incorrect understanding that after a month of working out, you're going to look like them. So what happens in the first month? You're excited. You go to gym every single month. You know, and you take the pains and your body is sore, but you know, I'm excited. I'm going to gym. Then life happens. Company doesn't make money. You don't make your targets. You fall a bit ill. Something happens. And all of a sudden, you stop going to gym for a day. A day becomes two. Two becomes a week. Now, all of a sudden, you've had a gym membership for three months and you haven't been in that time. What did did you miss? You thought motivation was the formula. Winners don't need motivation. Winners need discipline. Discipline is about getting it done because it needs to get done. Not because I feel like it. Not because I'm motivated for it. You think Nelson Mandela was motivated to spend 27 years in prison? (laughs) You think Martin Luther King was motivated to march across the states and proclaim freedom? You think, you know, if you look at people that change the world, they're not doing it because they're motivated. They're doing it because they made a commitment to do it and they disciplined to see it through. Discipline is far more important than motivation. Which is why you've got to be careful the decisions you make. Because once you make the decision, you have to see that decision through. Like my mentor says, first we make the decisions, then the decisions make us. So you've got to be very careful the decisions you make. Be very careful the commitments you make. Motivation, I'm telling you now, is completely overrated. It's important. Don't get me wrong. You know, we meet according to motivation. We feel good. Rah, rah. But uh, that'll fade. You need a stronger will and a deeper commitment to see things through. One of my key phrases for the whole day. Disciplines work miracles. Disciplines work miracles. And here's the first piece that works miracles. Number one, do what you can. Do not let neglect grab you by the throat. Don't let neglect stall you on your path toward prosperity and health being able to become powerful, influential, rich, beyond wildest imagination. Don't neglect what you can do. If you can read, read. If you can change, change. If you can grow, grow. If you can take one step, take one step. Do not neglect to do whatever you can do at the moment. 
Of course, you can't run a multi-billion dollar business today. Mark couldn't either 10 years ago. Mark couldn't either five years ago. But I'm telling you, today he can do it because step by step, year by year, he took on what he could do. He didn't neglect it. He did the meetings he could do. He made the calls he could make. He read the books he could read. He took the classes he could take. And step by step, he got himself ready. I'm telling you, do not neglect to do whatever you can do because it'll work miracles of personal development first, productivity second. Now, do what you can. Here's number two, do the best you can. If it's a foggy night and you can only see 100 feet, how can you see another 100 feet? Answer, walk the first 100 feet. Walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. And walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. So what you've picked up here, just do it as far as you can see it. And I promise you, if you'll execute as far as you can see it, you'll be able to see more. Do that, then you can see more. And finally, get in tune of doing the best you can. And you'll have the activity that'll develop the disciplines that will set this sail so that you can say it doesn't matter how the wind blows. I'm prepared. For some people, they see discipline as sort of an ugly word. You know, don't talk to me about discipline. But what you must understand is discipline is a most incredible creative force. Discipline builds a career. Discipline develops good health. Uh, discipline forms the most incredible marriage. Uh, discipline puts together a friendship that, that won't quit forever. Um, discipline uh, develops skills that, that can be magnified you know, and touch the world. Uh, discipline opens up music. You know, you can't have incredible music without discipline. Uh, in fact, we call them the disciplines. We call architecture and music, and we call uh, playing an instrument. Uh, we call sculpturing, we call painting, uh, we call writing, composing. We call those the disciplines. And uh, the disciplines gives us the indication that yes, it doesn't come except by discipline, but it also means that the discipline is the open door. To the, to the creative process to turn nothing into something and to turn imagination into reality. So here's what you must learn to do. Appreciate the disciplines and welcome the disciplines. Here's a good question to ask. What other discipline could I begin that would open up a whole new expression in my life of turning imagination into reality? Without discipline, there is no enterprise. Without discipline, there is no magnificent structure. Without discipline, there is no music. Uh, without discipline, there is no health. Uh, without discipline, uh, you know, there is no advantage. There is no future. So discipline is all when it comes to imagination, having something real, believing in it, and turning it into reality. The key to development is to be all that you can possibly be. I don't know what your talents are. I don't know what your skills are. But here's what I probably am right on, that you're behind on an accelerated effort toward your full development. I would suggest that. Now, for some of you, I know that's probably really not true. But even as I look at my own life, because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to procrastinate just like everybody else. You know, I should have written 30 books by now. I've only written four or five. You know, I should have done a lot of things, but I haven't. You know, I got distracted and all of us, you know, have these challenges. But what could I become? What could I become? I had one of my dearest friends. I've lost him. He died at age 53. Um, one day, and, and he drank a little too much. David drank a little too much, but he, but he did all kinds of things. He was a builder, and he was a dreamer, and he did a lot of things. But his, his drinking sort of kept him in a fog for like years and years. About six years ago, he was sitting at the yacht club and he was in a fog, and suddenly it occurred to him, I wonder what I could have accomplished all these years if I hadn't have been in this sort of foggy state. And he said, that did it. And the last six years before he died, he was free. 
and he accomplished some incredible things that last six years. Um, being all that you can be and not let habits drag you down, not let things, you know, sidetrack you from the full development of what you have the capable of being. Uh, what, what all could your heart encompass if you really had the chance and you really had the disciplines and, and really got to it? What could you really become? What could you earn? How healthy could you really be? How many books could you write? How many poems could you write? So here's what I would ask of you. If you feel that you're a little bit stalled wherever you are in your progress, I'm asking you to correct that. I'm asking you to see if you can't possibly be on a more accelerated track toward your possibilities and your full development. Here's what life is all about, to become all that we can possibly be. Uh, the full development of all of your potential, that's number one. Number two is the wise use of all of your resources. That's what life is all about. Discipline. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the one. Discipline. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. The bridge between inspiration and value achievement. The bridge between necessity and productivity. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us adrifting, and drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. Failing in life is failing to think today, failing to act today, failing to care, to strive, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. If your goal requires that you write 10 letters today and you write only three, you are down seven letters. If you want to make five calls and you only make one, you are down four on calls. If your plan calls for saving $10 today and you save none, you're down $10 today. Now the danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. It doesn't seem like such a bad day, but add up these days to make a year and then add up those years to make a lifetime and perhaps you can now see how repeating today's small failures can easily turn your life into a major disaster. Success, on the other hand, is just the same process in reverse. If you plan to make 10 calls and you end the day making 15, now you're up five calls. If you then get up a few on letters, move up the savings numbers, you can see what a massive difference it could make in a year and what wealth and accomplishment awaits for a lifetime. Discipline is like a set of magic keys that unlocks all the doors of wealth, happiness, sophistication, culture, high self-esteem, pride, joy, accomplishment, satisfaction, and success. The first key to discipline is awareness of the need for and the value of discipline, and especially the discipline to make the changes. What will it take? What must I do? And what must I become to get all I want from my life? The second key is the willingness. More than that, the eagerness to maintain your new discipline deliberately, wisely, consistently. And the third key to discipline is the commitment to master the circumstances of your daily life, to see and harness the opportunities to make something of the sun and the rain, the good as well as what comes in the guise of misfortune. Discipline does many things, but most important of all is what it does for you. It makes you feel better about yourself. Even the smallest discipline can have an incredible effect on your attitude. And the good feeling you get, that surging feeling of self-worth that comes from starting a new discipline, is almost as good as the feeling that comes from the accomplishment of the discipline. Second, a new discipline immediately alters your life direction. You don't change destinations immediately. That is yet to come. But you can change direction immediately. And direction is very important. Third, discipline cooperates with nature. Everything strives. It is a common life function. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Everything strives to become all it can possibly be. 
And that striving to become is what discipline is all about. Disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential to become all that we can be. And finally, discipline attracts opportunity. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill in action. Discipline taps the unlimited power of commitment. The human will in action, driven by inspiration, enticed by desire, tempered by reason, guided by intelligence, can bring you to that high and lofty place called the good life. So start the new process. You can begin a new habit no matter how small it is. Small isn't important. Whether or not you start and whether or not you continue are all that is important. So to have a prosperous life, start a prosperity plan. To become wealthy, start a wealth plan. Remember, you don't have to be wealthy to have a wealth plan. A person with no means can have a rich plan. If you are ill, start a health plan. If you don't have energy, start an energy plan. If you don't feel good, start a feel-good plan. If you're not smart, start a smart plan. If you can't, start a can plan. If you haven't, start a have plan. Anyone can. Even a bad person can start hearing good messages and reading good books. Recognize that the start of the better life, the happy life, the wealthy life, is today. This is exciting. Both the process and the result can begin today. Start the new journey today. If you think of a new idea, today is the day to begin the discipline of putting that idea into action. Set this day up as a long, busy, exciting start for your new life. Get your first book for your new library today. Begin your new practice of setting goals today. Start clearing out a drawer of your new orderly desk today. Start eating an apple a day on your new health plan today. Put some money in your new Investment for Fortune account today. Start reading with intensity for your new Wealth of Mind plan today. Write a postponed letter today. Make a delayed telephone call today. Pick up your camera and take a picture of something to start your new treasury of photographs today. Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. See how many activities you can pile on in this first day. Go all out. Break away from the negative downward pull of gravity. Start the thrusters going. Prove to yourself that waiting is over, hoping is past, and that faith and action have now taken charge. It's a new day, a new beginning for your new life. With discipline, you can't believe the list of positive moves you can make in the first day of your new beginning.